30-second mark. Water also will be coming on to the decks of the mobile launcher at the ignition point. T-minus 20 seconds, and the countdown continues to go smoothly. Guidance release, T-minus 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. We have ignition sequence has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, Lifting off the pad now, moving up. Skylab has cleared the tower. Houston is now controlling. Mark 18 seconds. General program. It's our now maneuvering to the proper flight path attitude. Mark 25 seconds. Mark 30 seconds. 35 seconds, one nautical mile in altitude, uh, looking good. Range safety, uh, give Saturn a green, uh, we've cleared the beach. Mark uh, 50 seconds, two and a half nautical miles in altitude. The ground display data shows good stable thrust on all five engines. Coming up now in one minute. Mark one minute. One minute, five seconds, four nautical miles in altitude coming up now and create a maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. One minute, ten seconds. Roll program complete to pitch profile still in progress. Mark, one minute, twenty seconds, seven nautical miles in altitude. The velocity now reading 2,500 feet per second. Mark, one minute, thirty seconds, pass through max Q, still looking good. Saturn now at 11 nautical miles in altitude, 5 nautical miles downrange, velocity now reading 3,300 feet per second. One minute, 45 seconds, all sources continuing to look good. One minute, 56 seconds, 20 nautical miles in altitude. The Skylab would then continue its journey upwards. The five um, J-2 engines of the S-2 would keep firing until they ran out of fuel. Luckily, they didn't have to carry a spacecraft this time. They just had to carry the third stage of the Saturn V, which didn't have fuel in it. <laughs> and um, so they were able to get to orbit. This There's fuel in the Skylab of this one, or this model of it, but in real life it would not have fuel. It was a hollowed out S4B stage from a Saturn V that they converted into a lab. And we've reached low Earth orbit now. So we're going to separate from the S2 stage because we don't need that anymore. After we do a bit of a circularization burden, they would not have actually done this in real life because they would have already had a circular orbit. And we're separating. We'll get rid of those fairing things that just make it look better. <laughs> and then we'll get rid of the actual fairing. So when the solar arrays of Skylab deployed, the micrometeoroid shield got knocked off and took the left solar array with it. So that's what you're seeing right now because that solar array got ripped off. When the crew came up, they had to fix it and they had to bring a new micrometeoroid shield to protect, to protect Skylab from space debris. Sequence to start on the vehicle. T minus seven, six, five, four, three. Engine sequence start. Two, one, zero. We have launch commit and we have liftoff. The clock is running and Skylab has cleared the tower. Houston is now controlling. The thrust is going all inches. Boy, is that a smooth ride. 
five seconds. Pitch and roll program started. Skylab now maneuvering to its proper flight path attitude. Mark 35 seconds, one nautical mile on altitude. Given a green by range safety. Mark 45 seconds, cabin pressure relieving, adjusting now from sea level to a space environment. Mark 50 seconds, two nautical miles in altitude. Your roll is complete, Houston. Roger. Stand by for mode one, Bravo. Mark, mode one, Bravo. Roger, propel and stop is RCS command. Roger. Mark uh, one minute, eight seconds, roll program complete. LM Houston, your feet wet. Roger, feet wet. The board's out. I've got an S4 belay, Houston, and a nice staging. Roger that. Mark. Two minutes, uh, 35 seconds, staging on schedule. Conrad White's Kerwin now riding on a good second stage engine. Coming up now, launch escape tower, Genesis 4 Bay. Tower, you on time. Roger, Tower Jefferson, you're mode two. Mark, three minutes, two seconds, 47 nautical miles in altitude. The launch escape tower now ejected, reports Conrad. His crew safety roll no longer required. Three minutes, 12 seconds, 50 nautical miles in altitude, 84 nautical miles downrange. Velocity now reading 8,200 feet per second. Three minutes, 25 seconds, the first stage and launch escape tower both falling away now, headed for their own splashdowns. Meanwhile, Conrad White's Kerwin, now at 58 nautical miles, so Skylab continuing to climb, moving out well beyond the Earth's atmosphere. The rocket would then also get into orbit, and pretty much match the orbit of the Skylab. After the single J-2 engine on the S-4B stage was done firing, that stage was jettisoned, which you'll see in a second. And we're in orbit, and we're in the correct orbit to dot now. And we'll jettison that S-4B stage after transferring some fuel, which they would not have been able to do in real life. But in real life, the RCS would not have used the fuel from the service module, they would have used monopropellant, which was in the service module. And we're in the same orbit now, and in a few orbits we'll be able to dock. And we just need to time warp until they're pretty much right next to each other, which looks like they are now. <laughs> And so we can zoom out a bit. We might need that engine, so we'll turn it on. And we still don't see it, but we're close to it. Our closest approach is in a minute or two, so we'll time warp. And there it is. There's the Skylab. So now we'll, I think we use our, we don't really need the engine this time, so we'll just use that. RCS to go in and dock. This docking would be similar to the Agena or Lunar Module dockings, so they had already figured that out. <laughs> this one would be the first American docking to a space station, though, which would be a really good landmark. <laughs> I retracted one of the solar panels on the solar array that's near the docking port because on this one I wouldn't be able to, oh wait, we're using the engine, there we go, <laughs> to slow down. Because on this one I would crash into the solar panel if I tried to go in there, but in real life the docking port was not on the same like level as the solar panels, so they wouldn't have crashed, but... That's why I retract one of the solar panels in a second. See, I'm switching right there. <laughs> you can see it only has one of the solar arrays because the other one got knocked off. That's an oof. Okay. 
and we're coming in for our docking. We're using our RCS to control now. And you can see the docking port down there near the solar panels. And it'll appear on our screen in a second as we get closer. There it is. Now we just need to line up exactly with it and go forward. And just a second. <laughs> and we are docked. For the first time ever, the USA has sent a crew to their own space station. Thank you for watching.